Josh Weikert from Craft Beer and Brewing magazine describes Munich Dunkel as tasting like fresh bread dipped into molten toffee. That sounds pretty good to me, and I'm going to brew one up while experimenting with splitting up my brew day. Hi, I'm Martin Keane, and I'm taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 different beer styles. And as I'm brewing those beers, I've really focused in on trying to reduce the overall length of my brew day. It's one of the reasons I elected to get a unibrow system. But there's no getting away from it. Brewing beer is a big chunk of time commitment out of your day. Now I have got into the habit of prepping the day before a brew day. So I'll typically measure out the ingredients and get my system set up the night before. But brew day is still this big mammoth amount of time that I have to set aside. Typically it's about three and a half hours for me. So what I want to do is to be able to incorporate brewing better into the free time that I have over the next three days. So what I'm gonna do is fit the brew day into little portions of free time. So 45 minutes here, 90 minutes there, and so forth. And then in between those stages, I'm just really going to pause what's going on with the brewing so I can go about living my everyday life. So it's 9 p.m. Monday night. Let's get started by measuring out some ingredients. So what do I have for ingredients? Well, base malt for this one is Munich malt. I have uh, Munich 10 here, and I have nine pounds of that. Then for my specialty malts, I have uh, eight ounces of Vienna malt, which will give the beer the toastiness that we're looking for. And then for the malt complexity, and, and of course the color, I'm using Carafe 2, and I'm using six ounces of that. All right, let's get this stuff crushed up. All right, grain milled. Gonna put the top on this. And next, time to sort out the brewing equipment. We don't want favors, we go in, ain't no one basic. We're so close, I swear I can say. Well, there we go. Grain measured and milled, system built, water added. That's me done for the night. Good night. All right, I'm home from work. It's, uh, it's Tuesday at 5 p.m. Now, something I did this morning before leaving was I plugged in my temperature controller into a smart plug. Now this is just one of these plugs that basically will turn power on or off and you can control it on your phone. So what I did is I set my temperature controller to the strike water temperature that I wanted and then turned it off at the smart plug. Then I set an automation to turn this thing back on again at 4.30 this evening. So at 4.30 it clicked on, the uh, temperature was then heating up in, uh, in my kettle here, and I've arrived home now to strike water, which is at the temperature that I want it. So I am ready to go straight to mashing in. Grandpapa had a metal plate from his time served in the war. He used to pick up radio waves that he said were from the future. I'm mashing in at 152 Fahrenheit for about 60 minutes to get to a pre-boil gravity of 1042. Beautiful color on this one. All right, pop this lid on, let it mash. Time for the school run. Okay. 
That was cool. It's been about 35 minutes of mashing while I was away. The color has got a little bit darker now. Now what I'd like to do at this point is to take a gravity reading to see how close I am to my desired pre-boil gravity. So the way that I will do that is very easy with this system. I'm just gonna steal a sample in here of the wort. Use my digital thermometer to figure out the temperature. Okay, 146. Then put the hydrometer in. Looks like the reading is about 1028. Let's put that into Beersmith. I can see here that 1.028 at a temperature of 146 is a corrected gravity of 1.045. That's actually a couple of points over what I was looking for. So this mash uh, is effectively done. So with that being the case, it's now time to remove the grains from the wort. Oh, from the smell alone, I can almost already taste that fresh bread dipped in molten toffee. It smells delicious. Okay, so what I will do here is I'm gonna turn off the temperature, turn off the pump, and then pull the grains out of the boil. I'm gonna take the grain basket off. Now it's finished draining. There we go. Now I'm just gonna put the lid on. Actually, putting this on upside down creates a, a better seal with, with this thing on here. Now I'm gonna put the brakes on here and pause this brew day again until I have a bit more time. Now I didn't want to just leave the mash in here at mash temperature because over time that temperature is going to drop and there is the potential for all sorts of bugs and infections to get into this wort as it cools down. Now yes, I know I'm going to be boiling the wort later anyway, but at this sort of temperature, at mash temperature and a little bit below that, there is the opportunity that the beer could kind of sour in that time frame. So to avoid that, I've heated this wort up to 170 Fahrenheit. And then what I've done on my temperature controller here is I've put it in boil mode, which means the heating element is always on, and I've set it at 10% capacity. And what that's doing is holding the beer at about 170 Fahrenheit. So the whole time I'm away, the beer is constantly on, the heating element is on running at 10% capacity, which is gonna keep the beer warm, but it's not gonna let the temperature drop and it's not going to boil it. So I'm now free to go about the rest of my evening, have some dinner, watch some TV, hang out with the family, and I'll come back to this a bit before bedtime. Is it too good to be true? I want this so much, but don't know if I Okay, I'm back for the evening session with supplies. German pills really come out nice. Now, the, uh, th this worked incredibly well. Uh, having this running at 10%, um, I came back, you know, hours later, it's, uh, it's 9.45 right now and I finished about 6.30. So um, it's been running for several hours at 10% and the temperature when I came back, 170 Fahrenheit. It just maintained the temperature perfectly. So I'm heating up now to boil. This won't take very long. I'm at 180 already. Um, and that is when I will add in the hops. Now with a malt Ford beer style like Munich Dunkel, it's no surprise that there are not a ton of hops going into this. I'm going for an IBU of 27. I'm gonna get there using my bittering hop as Perle hops. I have one ounce of those and I'm gonna put those in at 60 minutes. Then with five minutes to go, I have Tetanang hops, half an ounce of those. And I'll be adding those at five minutes just to give a little subtle hint a little bit of herbiness, a little bit of spiciness um, on the finish of this beer. The beer's come out at 
1058. I cooled it down to 64 is as cool as I could get it. That's not cool enough, I need to get it to 50 Fahrenheit. So what I've done now is I've put the beer into my fermentation chamber, which I've set to be cold. And I'm just gonna leave it there overnight. And then when I get up in the morning, that's when I'll add the yeast and complete the brew day. So last thing I'm gonna do now is just give everything a quick rinse and then soak this in PVW overnight. Good morning, the wort chilled to 51 Fahrenheit overnight, so it's now ready to receive the yeast. I have here a starter of WLP 820, that's Oktoberfest Marzen yeast. So what did I think of the split brew day? Well, if you have enough time, there's a lot to be said for just knocking out an entire brew in one go and being done with it. I especially like to start really early, get a brew done by like 10.30 in the morning and I'm done for the day. But that said, the flexibility that this provides me of splitting my brew day really means I can brew at times where I would just never otherwise have the time to do it. And it's really comforting to know the fact that if I get through, uh, say, a mash and I'm halfway through brewing and then something comes up, I know it's actually going to be pretty easy for me just to hold things where they are, stop, and then come back later when I've got more time to do the boil. So, yeah, this has been, this has been a good experiment and a, a nice option to have. Time to taste this thing. I've got Lauren here with me. So the fermentation notes, this thing came out at 1016. It's a 5.5% beer. So let's take a look, first of all, as always, at appearance. It's dark. Dark, 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 yep. Um, star guidelines say sort of a very dark red, which I think this is. It does look black originally, black. initially, right? But yeah. But it does, if you hold it up to the light, I think it has a little tinge of color. Mm, smells pretty malty. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if this was just like a random beer sat on a bar and I sniffed it, um, I, th I would expect for a beer this dark to sort of get some toasty notes, uh, maybe a, a coffee smell, and it's certainly none of those things, right? Yeah, no, I agree. If I saw this, I'd probably think it was like a stout or something, and it yep. doesn't smell like that nope. whatsoever. No, nope. malty. Uh, a little bit of sweetness. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty. I do taste a slight hint of sweetness. Yes. I don't know. To me, it kind of tastes a little bit like a caramel undertone. Well, what I'm going for is um, bread dipped in liquid toffee is the description for this beer. So. Okay, I could, I could totally see that. <laughs> yeah. Without being like too sickly sweet, right? Yeah, no, there's, yeah, it's definitely a very light sweetness for sure. Well, for you to say that you like a dark beer, I feel like that's, uh, that's it, a success. But it's not really a dark beer though, it's a dark appearing beer. <laughs> but it's... Totally different. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like this. Well, I will drink to that. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> 